Welcome everyone to the Apotheki Tales, the basics of pharmacology. Today we're going to talk about the inhalers, the different types of inhalers and how to use them. Inhalers are not the last but the first resort medicine for treating the breathing problems such as asthma and COPD. Across the globe, inhalers are considered to be the most effective, safe and convenient way of treating most of the breathing problems. With inhalers, the medication reaches the airways in the lungs directly exactly where it has to act in a matter of seconds and provides a relief. Whereas if you try to take tablets and syrups, first it needs to be ingested which means they reach the stomach and bloodstream first and the lungs later. Thus they do not provide a quick relief. Moreover, a large dose is required to produce the same effect as the inhaled medication. Since the inhaler medication reaches the problem area directly, the dose that needs to be taken is significantly lower than that of the tablets and syrups. Now there are two types of medication that can be taken through inhalers, which are usually the controllers or preventers and the relievers. As the name suggests, the controllers or preventers are basically used to control the symptoms and the relievers are used to provide the instant relief. The inhaler devices are broadly classified into four categories. That is pressurized meter dose inhalers, dry powder inhalers, breath actuated inhalers and nebulizers. First we are going to talk about the pressurized meter dose inhalers which is also referred to as pump inhalers. This is the most commonly used inhaler devices. They are usually propellant based and deliver a specific amount of medication to the lungs in the form of aerosol spray. It releases the reproducible doses every time on the actuation. This means that the same amount of the dose is released every time. These inhalers do not depend upon the patient's inhalation to trigger the release of the drug. They require the coordination. That is the coordination between the actuation of the canister and the inhalation of the dose. That means you must inhale and simultaneously press the canister to release the medication dose. So if you observe pressurized meter dose inhaler, it has got a canister within which there is propellant with drug suspension where the, it is being held by the plastic holder, then there is a metering valve, then a mouthpiece through which the aerosol is being released. So this is the parts of a pressurized meter dose inhaler. At times these pressurized meter dose inhalers also come with a dose counter making it easy to keep track of the number of puffs remaining in the device. That means if you observe there is a monitor which shows the number of the puffs remaining in the device. Now let's see how is the pressurized meter dose inhaler administered or used. For that we have to first sit up straight or stand up and lift the chin to open the airways. Then shake the canister, remove the cap from the mouthpiece, breathe out gently. Immediately place the mouthpiece in your mouth and put your teeth around it. And remember not in front of it and do not bite it. Start to breathe in slowly and deeply through the mouthpiece. As you breathe in, simultaneously press the canister to release one puff of the medication. Remember, do not keep pressing the canister. Hold your breath for about 10 seconds or as long as possible. So this is a cycle of how you take one puff. And if you require a second dose, then what we do is that we have to wait for about 30 to 60 seconds before taking a second puff and repeat the procedure if necessary. After that, replace the cap. So this is the normal procedure using the pressurized meter dose inhaler. Once again, we have to sit up straight or stand up and lift the chin to open the airways, shake the canister, remove the cap from the mouthpiece, breathe out gently, immediately place the mouthpiece in your mouth and put your teeth around it to keep in mind not in front of it and do not bite it. Then start to breathe in slowly and deeply through the mouthpiece and as you breathe in, simultaneously press the canister to release one puff of the medication and remember not to press the canister again and again. Then hold your breath for 10 seconds or as long as possible. And if second dose is required, then we have to do is wait for a 30 to 60 seconds before taking the second puff and repeat the procedure and replace the cap. So this is the way in which we use it in case of pressurized meter dose inhalers. 
One important thing to keep in mind is that if your inhalers have got steroid in it, then we have to wash our mouth after the use of the inhalers to avoid the development of the oral thrush. Certain devices can be actually attached to the PMDIs to ease its use. First thing is the Zerostat BT spacer. So this is usually attached to the PMDI where it holds the medication for a little while after the PMDI's actuation. That means the spacer will help you to inhale all the medication even if you do not inhale exactly at the same time when the PMDI canister is pressed for releasing the medication. Now how to use the Zero Strat VT spacer? So if you observe there are two halves for this device. First we have to assemble this by firmly pushing the two halves of the spacer together and rotate it. Then remove the cap from the mouthpiece of the inhaler. Shake the inhaler very well. Insert the inhaler firmly into the opposite end of the Zero Strat VT spacer. Holding the inhaler, press down on the canister to release a dose into the Zerostat VT spacer. Then we have to breathe out fully through the mouth. Immediately remove the mouthpiece cap from the Zerostat VT spacer and then close the lips firmly around the mouthpiece to create a good seal. Remember that we do not bite it. Breathe slowly and deeply through the mouth, thus inhaling the medicine through the space. Remove the zero set VT spacer from the mouth and hold your breath for about 10 seconds or as long as it is comfortable for you. Breathe out normally and if a second dose is required, wait for a minute, repeat the steps 2 to 5. So this is how we use a zero stat VT spacer. So once again we have to assemble the zero stat VT spacer by firmly pushing the two halves of the spacer together and rotate it. Remove the cap from the mouthpiece of the inhaler. Shake the inhaler very well. Then insert the inhaler firmly into the opposite end of the zero stat VT spacer. Holding the inhaler, press down on the canister to release the dose into the zero stat VT spacer. Then breathe out fully through the mouth. Immediately remove the mouthpiece cap from the zero stat VT spacer and then close the lips firmly around the mouthpiece to create a good seal. Remember, do not bite it. Breathe slowly and deeply through the mouth, thus inhaling the medicine through the space. Then remove the zero stat VT spacer from the mouth. Hold your breath for about 10 seconds or a or as long as possible, then breathe out normally. If a second dose is required, wait for a minute, repeat the steps 2 to 5. Next, how do we clean the spacer? This is by separating the two halves of the spacer by gently rotating and pulling them apart. Rinse both the halves in clean water and then shake to remove the excess water. Wipe dry with soft cloth or leave it to air dry. So that is all about the Zero Stat VT spacer. The next device that can be attached to the pressurized uh, meter dose inhaler is the baby mask. So if you observe this is the baby mask, when the child is unable to hold the zero stat VT spacer's mouthpiece properly, you can attach the baby mask to the spacer and then use the pressurized meter dose inhaler. And it is also useful for those who have difficulty in maintaining a good lip seal on the mouthpiece of the PMDI. The next device is the Huff Puff Kit. So here the spacer and the baby mask come in the pre-assembled form which will enable the quick delivery of the medicine and saves the time. So that is all about the pressurized meter dose inhaler. Next we are going to talk about the dry powder inhaler. So first we talked about the pressurized meter dose inhaler. Next we are moving on to the dry powder inhalers. So these dry powder inhalers are the type of inhalers which will deliver the medication in a dry powder form. And these are usually breath actuated devices which depend on your inhalation to release the medication from the device. In comparison to the PMDIs, these are easier to use as they do not need propellants and coordination. Usually the DPS are single dose devices, although multi-dose Dry powder inhalers are available as well. So first we are going to talk about the Revolizer, one type of the dry powder inhaler. This is an easy to use DPI usually used with medication capsules known as the rotor caps. It provides an accurate medication dose and a more efficient dispersal even when the inhalation flow rates are low. 
So how to use this revelizer? So first we have to open and hold the revelizer at the base with one hand and pull back the mouthpiece as seen in the diagram. Then remove a rotor cap from its bottle. Then insert the rotor cap into the rotor cap chamber with the transparent end facing down as shown. Close the mouthpiece firmly. Then a click sound will indicate proper closing of the revelizer. Breathe out completely through the mouth. Position the mouthpiece between the teeth and close the lips tightly around it. Sit or stand upright, keep your head straight and breathe in through the mouth rapidly and deeply. When done correctly, you will hear the rotor cap vibrating inside the revelizer. Remove the revelizer from your mouth and hold your breath for about 10 seconds or as long as it is comfortable for you. Breathe out normally. In case some powder remains in the rotor cap chamber, repeat the step 4 and 5. Ensure that no powder remains in the rotor cap chamber. After every use, open the mouthpiece till both the arrows meet and discard the empty rotor cap. Close the mouthpiece and store the revelizer in the convenient carry pouch provided. So this is the way in which we are using the revelizer. So once again, how do we use the revelizer? First, we open it by holding the revelizer at the base with one hand and then pull back the mouthpiece. Then we remove the rotor cap from its bottle and place it in the rotor cap chamber with the transparent end facing down. Close the mouthpiece firmly. A click sound will indicate proper closing of the revelizer. Then breathe out completely through the mouth. Position the mouthpiece between the teeth and close the lips tightly around it. Sit or stand upright, keep your head straight and breathe in through the mouth rapidly and deeply. When done correctly, you will hear the rotor cap vibrating inside the revelizer. Then we have to remove the revelizer from your mouth and hold your breath for about 10 seconds or for as long as it is comfortable. Then breathe out normally. In case some powder remains in the rotor cap chamber and repeat the step 4 and 5. Ensure that no powder remains in the rotor cap chamber. After every use, open the mouthpiece till both the arrows meet and discard the empty rotor cap. Close the mouthpiece and store the uh, revelizer in the convenient carry pouch provided. Next, how are we going to clean the revelizer? For that, open the mouthpiece till both the arrows meet of the revelizer. Then if there is an empty rotor cap in the chamber, remove it. Rinse the mouthpiece and rotor cap chamber in clean running water. Shake well to remove the excess water and leave it to air dry. So that is about the revelizer. Next we are going to talk about the rotor haler. Rotor haler is an easy to use completely transparent DPI. It is usually used with the medication capsules known as the rotor caps. Since it is completely transparent, it enables you to make sure that you have inhaled the entire medication. So how are we going to use the rotor haler? So first we have to hold the rotor haler vertically and position the two halves of the device such that the fin is not directly below the rotor cap hole. Remove the rotor cap from its bottle and insert it into the rotor cap hole with its transparent end facing down. Hold the mouthpiece firmly with one hand and rotate the base. Breathe out completely and place the mouthpiece of the rotor haler between your teeth. Close your lips tightly around it and tilt your head slightly backward and breathe in through the mouth rapidly and deeply. Hold your breath for about 10 seconds or for as long as you are comfortable and then breathe out normally. If in case some powder remains, then we have to repeat the step 4 and 5. Then open the rotor haler and dispose the empty capsule. So this is the way in which we use the rotor haler. So once again, hold the rotor haler vertically and position the two halves of the device such that the fin is not directly below the rotor cap hole. Remove the rotor cap from its bottle and insert it into the rotor cap hole with its transparent end facing down. Hold the mouthpiece firmly with one hand and rotate the base. Breathe out completely and place the mouthpiece of the rotor haler between your teeth. Close your lips tightly around it and tilt your head slightly backward and breathe in through the mouth rapidly and deeply. Hold your breath for about 10 seconds or for as long as you are comfortable and then breathe out normally. And if there is any powder remaining, repeat the step 4 and 5. Then open the rotor haler and dispose the empty capsule. Next is how to clean the rotor haler. So first we have to separate the two halves of the rotor haler, discard the empty rotor cap shell, rinse the two halves in the clean running water, shake well to remove the excess water and leave it to air dry. 
So that is about the rotahaler. Next we are going to talk about the multihaler. So multihaler contains preloaded doses in a blister strip. So you do not have to insert a capsule every time you need to take a dose. So when you twist or rotate the device, it pierces the blister and releases a drug dose. Multihaler also has a dose counter which enables you to monitor the number of doses remaining in the device. So that is about the multihaler. So how do we use this multihaler? Hold the multihaler by the base and open the mouthpiece cover. Slide the knob until you hear a click sound. Place the mouthpiece between your lips and breathe in deeply. Remove the multihaler and hold your breath for about 10 seconds. So next we are going to talk about the breath actuated inhalers. So what are these breath actuated inhalers? It is an advanced version of the PMDI technology. The breath activated inhaler will combine the advantages of both the PMDI and DPI. The breath activated inhaler senses your inhalation through an activator and releases the medication automatically. And it usually consists of a pressurized canister of medication in a plastic case with a mouthpiece. The advantages of using the breath activated inhalers is that it increases the medication's effectiveness, portable size, as well as efficiency and convenient way of administration. So that is about the breath activated inhalers. Next is about the nebulizers. So nebulizers, unlike the PMDIs and DPIs, what they do is that they convert the liquid medication into the suitable aerosol droplets which are best suited for inhalation. Nebulizers do not require a coordination and can deliver the medication quickly and effectively to the lungs in the form of a mist. The nebulizers are preferred during asthma attacks in infants, children, elderly population, critical patients, patients who are unconscious and those who cannot use a PMDI or DPI effectively. Different parts of the nebulizer, so it consists of a machine and it has got a mouthpiece, a medicine cup, a mask and a connecting hose. So this is another diagram that shows the different parts of the nebulizer. So now let's just summarize what we have learned in this video. We have learned what are the inhalers, different types of inhalers such as the pressurized meter dose inhalers, dry powder inhalers, breath activated inhalers, nebulizers and how are those administered. So I hope you have clearly understood regarding the inhalers and if there is any doubt, comments and suggestions please do mail in us. Thank you.